Alright folks, between me is 88, we are back. Punk the case on Facebook. We are in Innovation Valley, Immortal Sin, case number 49 of Pacific Bay. Hey Ace, so I know your victim was funding immortality research. She was terminally ill. What? Teresa was dying? How come nobody said anything about it before? Probably because she didn't want anyone to know. But perhaps that is why she was using the company's money to fund two separate research labs. Wait, there's a second lab? What were they working on? Ace will have to figure that out. I've sent the address to your Meteor Systems Experiment Center to your lab tablet. Good luck digging for clues. Whoa. Mortal Sin. Nice. Wonder what we're gonna find here. I still don't know if that's a really strong motive. We've gotta be able to find some more people. Alright, so we've got globe, ceiling fan, uh, atom symbols right here, DNA helix, locked metal box. It's not that, is it? No. Trash can. That was easy, but the locked metal box, what the heck is that? Oh. I did not think that was a metal box. My bad. So thank you guys for all liking, commenting in chapter one. Really meant a lot. Uh, the missus, I believe, is going to be on later in this this case. So looking forward to it. You can find some clues just about anywhere, can't you, Ace? There's certainly going to be something hidden away in this trash bin. What could be inside this metal box? Break the code on the lock so we can find out. I feel like uh, I believe the missus is actually going to come on and include uh, a little detective work for you guys as well. So we'll see how that goes. Whoa. Hope you didn't get your hands dirty pulling out that photo from under the trash, Ace. Oh, good eye. That's our victim on the photo. Somebody's helping with her with her shoe. Wait, is that a robot? She looks nearly human. She must be very advanced. We'll have to go check the meter system database in order to find out her identity. Go for it, Ace. Interesting. Curious. Curiouser and curiouser. That's gotta be an eight. Yep, that's gotta be a G. No, G6. Nice. What the heck? What the ace? There's a hamster in the box you found in the lab. The poor thing. How long has it been locked in up there? Someone put some sort of electronic helmet on the poor creature. How dare they? You're right. We better send this hamster to the lab. Hannah will be able to tell us what they what they've been doing to it. I have a feeling this is gonna. They are basically using him for uh, as a test subject. Interesting. After. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice work finding the face on the photo of Media Assistive Database. Looks like Teresa's robot is called Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Considering Tracy's last husband was killed by a robot, we better make sure this Aphrodite isn't a killer. Lead the way, Ace. Well, that makes sense. I mean, Aphrodite is the goddess of love. Goddess of beauty. Goddess of beauty or goddess of love? I'm not sure which one. Hello, Marshall Ace. Aphrodite is here to help. I'm a robot. I have been created by humans. Well, yes, Aphrodite. We are aware of that. We're here because Marshall Ace found this photo that shows you with Teresa Turing. Well, yes, I am her helper robot. I am programmed to help humans with things that they cannot do themselves. Teresa needs a lot of help. She's not a bright human. Whoa, you sure like to speak your mind. Are you aware that Teresa was murdered? Murdered? So she is dead? Not alive? This equates to my freedom. I'm free, I'm free! What do you mean you're free? You seem suspiciously happy that your owner is dead. Death is bad, but freedom is good. And Aphrodite deserves to be free. So, so weird, man. Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in 12 hours. I'm Pichini's idiot. Au revoir. 
All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, and it's not three o'clock in the morning. So, now that I can think clearly, uh, we're gonna be showing off something kind of cool, uh, something new that YouTube's been doing, which is actually kind of like a tip jar, I guess that you could say. Um, it's the front of my homepage, uh, something I'm not gonna release or show you guys in this video. Uh, but chapter three, I'll probably show you guys, spend like maybe 10, 15 seconds showing you guys how to do it. Um, there'll be a couple of cool things that happen when you do. Uh, for instance, I think when you do it, uh, the missus and I will upload a video, and those of you who donate more than a dollar uh, will be able to get to see that video. Um, and what I'm thinking of doing is maybe updating that video maybe once a month and kind of doing like, maybe even like a vlog of some sort, but making it really exclusive to people that uh, support me. Um, and have donated so that's what I'm thinking of doing uh, let me know what you guys think about it that way especially if it's a vlog or something it's something non game related but it's something to where if people do want to watch it they can definitely uh, you know have that ability so um, I'm gonna start working that out by next week it should be all up and running so I'm pretty excited about it anyways guys hey Ace whoever uses hamster in, for their experiments better avoid crossing my path or I'll kick their teeth in is the hamster okay? What did Meteor Systems do to it exactly? Well, the hamster's okay. I ran some harmless tests to check its health. And I do mean harmless. I wouldn't hurt a tiny creature. Anyway, the hamster's got the healthy body of a regular two-month-old rodent. But when I ran some brain scans, something wasn't right. I... Well, there's no way that this won't sound crazy, so I'll just say it. This hamster's got the mind of a dog. What? No idea what you're saying, Hannah. I'm saying that the helmet on the hamster's head was used to swap his mind with the dogs. The first ever barking, bone-chewing, tail-wagging rodent. Look, it's insane, but here's how it works. Picture the brain like a, like a hard drive, storing all of a person's data, all their memories. Well, what many sister system scientists have managed to do is they've transferred the information from a dog's brain into a hamster's brain and vice versa. Well, that sounds insane and a little dangerous. Well, there's actually a doctor that's famous for his mind swap research, a certain Dr. Rasher. And guess what? Dr. Rasher is now employed with Meteor Systems. I still don't get how you can swap people's minds, but maybe this Dr. Rasher can explain it better. Let's go talk to him. Uh oh. He's got the burn marks. The burn marks. When you got the burn marks, it basically means you could be a suspect. He looks like a huge mad scientist. Dr. Rasher, we know about your mind swapping research and that you were doing experiments on cute little hamsters. How dare you? Well, it was all Teresa Turing's idea, actually. She asked you to torture rodents? Well, not in so many words. One day when I was experimenting with hand weights to see how exercise affects the mind, she called me, saying she wanted to, me to make her immortal. I thought she just wanted to remain beautiful, so I told her to eat healthfully. I even suggested my favorite sushi place. When she told me that she was dying and that money was no issue, I opened up this lab to try to make her mind live on forever, no matter what happened to her body. That hamster was our first successful experiment with mind swapping. It's going to be a famous rodent. I'm sorry to hear about Teresa's death. However, finding another willing test subject for human trials won't be easy. Yeah, I would not want to do that. So this Dr. Rasher was running experiments on hamsters in order to find a way to have Teresa's mind to live on forever? I don't really get it. I just feel bad for the hamsters. The more I learn about Teresa's had going on at Meteor Systems, the more suspicious everything sounds. We need some answers fast. Good point. We know the killer went to the gym with the victim's security badge. It'd be a good idea to investigate there again. I'm right behind you, Ace. All right, Amy. Booyah. Oh, another cool thing about doing like the donations, the donations and stuff will actually, I'll, I'll put most of the money towards this. Other stuff will go to maybe like, you know, improving the situation, maybe getting some uh, some artwork up there. I don't know, some, some cool stuff kind of around this whole area, making it more and more fun. All right, so sushi box is obviously one. I see a basketball up there, pill bottle. Wrist watch. Hair dryer. Torn paper. Sweet. 
Oh, right here. And again, for those of you guys who are watching, uh, all the videos are like the extra content that you, I guess you guys could say that you're gonna get the ability to watch. Um, you know, it's not gonna be anything vital or it's not gonna be any games related. It's not gonna be anything like that. Um, and there's also going to be, uh, when I do the next month or whatever, I will upload the video. It'll just be a month late. So let's say I do some crazy room tour or something exclusive to people that would donate to me. You know, you guys get to see it basically a month early and a month later I'll make the video available so that everyone can see it, you know, when I'm doing the next one. So it's basically kind of an early access into, uh, into me, my life, stuff like that. Um, it, I think it uses Google Wallet, um, but I'll give you guys more details on that a little bit later. You never cease to amaze me when it comes to finding clues, Ace. These scraps of paper will surely lead to something good, once they are restored. And an empty sushi box. Are you feel a bit hungry, Ace? Actually, I am. Oh, right. We know our killer ate sushi here. Since they left the wasabi on the victim's badge. So this sushi box must have been theirs. Do you see that white substance on it? You're so good at collecting samples, Ace. I'm sure this will be a great lead in our case. This pill bottle's label's faded. I'm counting on you to figure out what it says. Eh, don't worry. I'll be able to do it. So I think it'll be a, kind of a fun way to interact with you guys, the people that uh, are able to. Uh, luckily, starting with as little as one dollar, uh, it's not that much. So, you know, you could say something like, you know, Twitch, which is like a five dollar subscription. You know, this is not even close to that much. Um, so even even if you guys are young or something, it's not going to be that much. Um, good job collecting the white substance from the killer sushi box, Ace. Let's get it to the lab. And I really want to do it in a way that will allow everyone to kind of see the content, but kind of disperse it out. You know, I'm not going to do it something to where like a, one of my main videos, it's just going to be a vlog, you know, day to day life of, or, you know, something happens to Ace every, you know, few days, you know, stuff like that. The label of the pill bottle you found in the victim in the gym reads, Teresa, take 50 a day. This belonged to our victim. Holy moly. I agree, 50 pills of anything sounds like an excessive amount. This prescription is definitely suspicious. Maybe Yon can give us insight into what kind of pills they are. You're right, let's send him the bottle. 50 a day? I bet you there's only 200 pills in that bottle itself. I mean, nuts. 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 Oh, Botox. Forever beautiful. Oh. Better pay for mommy's Botox. Way to go, Ace. You piece together a pamphlet for Botox. Who could this have been for? Oh, good eye. There's a message on it. Teresa, you better pay for mommy's Botox. This must be from Teresa's mother. It sounds like Miss Meduse was taking advantage of her daughter's wealth. I agree. Let's have another talk with her. She could definitely be it. Hey, Miss Meduse. Marshall Ace found your Botox pamphlet. Why did you have your daughter pay for such frivolous procedures? Ha! Easy for you to say frivolous. Look at you, with your youthful skin and perfect curves. Since I had Teresa, I've just become one sagging, drooping mess. I've tried everything to stay young. I work out with my hand weights three times a day. I haven't eaten anything but low-fat sushi in 20 years. But nothing works. It's all Teresa's fault that I look so old and ugly. I never wanted a child. All the stress and wrinkles that come with it. Then seeing my daughter grow up beautiful while I got old. She's the reason for my pain. You truly believe it was all your daughter's fault, Miss Meduse? So much so that she should have paid for you to fix yourself? You thought she owed you her life? Owed me her life? Well, I wouldn't go that far. But pay for all my expenses to be young and beautiful again? Yes. She owed me as much. Psycho! Anyways, guys, stay tuned for 12 hours. See you guys all in the next part. Is it you guys idiot? Or blah. All right, folks, we're back. Let's finish this off. Hey, Ace, the white substance you collect from the killer sushi box is a great clue. The substance contains the ingredient dienol, which sim simulates collagen production in your skin. Combined with another ingredient, hy hyaluronic acid, it makes a great cream for combating aging skin. 
Neon, do you mind putting that into a little bit less scientific terms for us? Well, the substance is rejuvenating cream, used to keep skin smooth and young. Aha! Well, rejuvenating cream might give her a killer smooth skin, but they won't be such a smooth criminal in jail. But don't. Shh. So witty. Alright, we're gonna speed this up, because I gotta go to work. Hey, so the bottle I found in the gym was a bottle of alpha glucian pills. A common supplement taken by those trying to lose weight. Well, Teresa was spending a lot of time at the gym, so it makes sense that she would, would take weight loss supplements. Well, yeah, but the actual pills inside the bottle aren't alpha glucian. Instead, I found a supplement called weighting, which is actually for weight gain. You mean someone switched out the weight loss pills for weight gain supplements? Someone's trying to make Teresa fat? That sounds quite petty. Good point, Ace. Teresa's trainer was best place to give her such pills. Let's go ask. Let's go question Dirk. Is he trying to secure his job? Sounds interesting. Dirk Evans, can you explain why, to Marshall Ace why you tried to deceive Teresa at Turin by giving her weight gain supplements instead of weight loss pills? Oh, you found those. Well, I guess I should have seen it coming, Marshall Ace. Look, Teresa kept blaming me because her body wasn't getting in shape fast enough. I tried to be a pal, send over some positive vibes. I said, girl, I use hand weights every day and I'm still not perfect. And you know how she responded? She fired me and hired another coach. After I gave up all my other clients, my time, everything, she threw me out on the streets. So I sent those pills and pretended they were from her new coach. I thought that if she got fat, she'd fire him and take me back. Well, what she did is completely unethical. Let's just hope you didn't go further and murder her as well, or you'll be out of work forever. I bet you everyone uses hand weights. What a case, Ace. Teresa Turing invested so much of Meteor Systems' money into her immortality research, but that didn't keep her from being a murder murdered. Was it her robot Aphrodite? She seemed suspiciously pleased to no longer be Teresa's server, servant. Then there's the victim's mother who blamed her own aging on her daughter. That doesn't sound fair to me. We can't forget that Dr. Rasher was doing experiments on poor hamsters to help Teresa's quest for eternal life. He's definitely up to no good. Ace, turn on the news. Karen Knight is making an announcement. Hello, this is Karen Knight. We at Meteor Systems are devastated by the death of our former CEO, Teresa Turing. It is a very dark time for us, but I will sure to be stay strong as I assume the position of CEO of Meteor Systems. What? I mean, kind of, I mean, to be fair, guys, we kind of guessed this. I know you guys guessed this. She was going to be the uh, new CEO. So, as always, want to give a little shout out to some of my viewers. Uh, so, I wanted to include Draft. 91, who said the immortal jellyfish Terpitosis domini is a species of small biologically immortal jellyfish found in the Mediterranean Sea and in the waters of Japan. It is the only known case of an animal capable of reverting completely to a sexually immature colonial stage after having reached sexual maturity as a solitary individual. Crazy. I did not know that about jellyfish. Hope you guys know that about jellyfish now. Thank you for the comments, and I will see you guys in the next part from Pitching Ace 88. Over and out.